there, I'm JB Portello. Welcome to In the Know. This program is to help you be aware and informed of projects and events going on in our area. Each month, we're going to post the program on the POA's Facebook page and make it available on community television. Want to be in the know? Then stay tuned. Welcome to today's show. Our guest today is Tom Judson. Hi there. Good morning. Uh, it's always good to see you. Absolutely. Great to see you. We've got good things to talk about as Absolutely. always. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's jump right in and talk about last week's uh, board meeting and the celebrating success. So we had two. Uh, the first one was regarding uh, the uh, flash sale. And uh -huh. we talked about this last month, right. about how successful that was. We were able to sell 348 uh, lots within a very brief amount of time. And so what we did was we recognized all the people that were involved. I mean, you know, it was the cast of thousands that makes it happen behind the scenes. So it was, it was really nice we had a uh, uh, pizza lunch for them all oh, on friday yeah. uh, so it was very nice and it, it was well deserved because they all had to put in many hours uh, of hard work to make it happen you know team spirit and getting people together like that doing a good thing quickly mm -hmm. is fun well and that's why we call it celebrating success yeah. we want to reward when they do something fantastic we want to make sure we reward that because that's, that's right. so important it really is um, well, and I believe you had another pretty amazing guy that you celebrated. Yeah. So uh, Tommy Lee, who's in charge of our restaurants, um, he was working here at BV and this young lady, her family was there and they were celebrating her last uh, day of having chemo uh, and that she's cancer free. Mm. And it really touched his heart and he came out and brought her a free dessert and she was had big smile on her face and then he went back and he filled out a card and he brought her and brought her brought back to her the card which said free dessert for life oh. uh, and it was just a really special thing it was shared on Facebook and it was just you know and, and every time you talk to Tommy about it he always gets wells up inside because it was so impactful to him and so uh, and it was very impactful to the family they were the ones that posted it on the Facebook so it was really a neat it, it, it you talk about celebrating success well that was we got to create a whole new category for that one that's right and look at me i'm welling up just thinking about it that's beautiful it is it really is very is. much so okay so we have the election coming up correct we're encouraging everybody to vote mm -hmm. you got to vote right. uh right now we're at 18.8 percent so it's tuesday 18.8 in the morning uh so that's pretty good uh, we usually if for elections we hit 25 sometimes 30. this is uh, pretty good we might we may exceed 30 at this rate it was because we still have uh, three weeks to go it's on the 21st uh, so if you haven't voted, vote. You got to vote. Uh, it's important. Uh, go online. Uh, there's a, a, a tremendous amount of information about all the candidates. Uh, there's uh, bios on them. Mm -hmm. There's uh, uh, statements that we've recorded. You can look at the meet the candidates. So do your homework and make an informed decision. Uh, but most of all, vote. You know, there are a couple of things that I see that keep coming up, and most of us, I believe, understand, but I keep seeing um, if my wife and I both own the property, how many votes do we have? So each property gets one vote. Right. Okay. And how the property is listed on the deed. So if it is, uh, if you're listed first or your husband is listed first, it's going to go to whoever is listed first. Okay. But you can't split the vote. Uh, you, you know, it's one vote per property, okay. not per person, per property. Now, if you own multiple lots, let's say you own two lots, you own the ho your house and you own the lot next to you, on the top of your ballot, what you're going to see is going to say wait and it'll say two. Or maybe you own three and it'll say three or four, whatever, what have you. If you only own one, it's going to say one. So that weight is however you vote. If you, if you, if the weight is two, it's going to multiply your vote by two. Well, now that's automatic because a lot of people automatic. think I get another ballot. Nope. It's automatic okay. because keep in mind, we have some people, not that many, but we have some people that, you know, they own a hundred lots. 
we're not going to send them a hundred ballots. It's a waste of uh, paper and postage and, and everything. Okay. Uh, we're, you know, that's not that often, but there's a lot of people that own two lots and it's completely unnecessary to send out two ballots. Um, uh, if you and your spouse are in conflict, you guys need to figure that out, <laughs> not right. us. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I gotcha. Okay. Well, thank you for clearing that up because I do see that a lot. Now what you can do. Yeah. Let's say if, if you and your, you own two lots, you could change the title. You could do this. You can have the the one lot in in the in the wife's name and the second lot in the husband's name. You would get two ballots. Wow! If that's important to you. Yes. But it has to be before the cutoff date, which was March thirty first. I got you. So you could do that, uh, but uh, at the end of the day, you two need to figure out who you're going to vote for. Fair enough. Great answer. All right. So now. Uh, I'm seeing something here I don't know much about. So advertising to retirees and future retirees, what's up with that? So we had a resident come to our board meeting and it, and it really kind of uh, sparked a good conversation. I mean, a brief conversation, but it, it sparked a conversation uh, uh, amongst staff and everything of, what are we doing? What are we actively doing to bring in more uh, retirees? Uh, and, and encourage people to move here. And so not everybody is aware of this, but we advertise regularly in Ideal li Living. Uh, so, you know, if you want to look at it, go on to IdealLiving.com okay. and take a look at it. We, ha we have ads in there regularly. Um, between that and the ranking that we have, uh, that we had on Forbes and US News and Money Magazine, yes, that gets a lot of attention too. Uh -huh. And so between all three of those, we get about a thousand inquiries per year uh, about, tell me about Bella Vista, and we'll send them information. If you go, uh, each quarter we have a, um, a new residence meeting. Uh -huh. And the, I always ask the same question every single time I say, who here learned about Bella Vista within the last two to three years? You know, you know, if you learned about because your parents moved here 20 years ago, mm -hmm. okay, well, you're really talking about a marketing effort that is 20 years old. Right. I would, I want to know about the marketing efforts that we've been doing for the last two to three years. And so uh, the, the number of people that raise their hand in, in these meetings, they usually have 50, 60, 70 people in attendance. Um, a large majority, steadily a large majority, are raising their hands. They've learned about Bellavis in the last two years, three years, and then we have them visit with Kim Carlson, who's in charge of marketing, to find out, you know, how did they learn about mm -hmm. us? Oh, they, you learned about us from Ideal Living. Okay, well then we get enough people telling us that, that uh, they learned about us from Ideal Living. Well, maybe we need to in, invest in more advertising. Um, and, and we've tried a couple other types of websites directed at retirees, but this one is the one that gets the most bang for our buck. Well, and it's good to know that because I, I'm really glad that person brought it up mm -hmm. because it gave you the opportunity to say what you do. There's a lot of things that we do behind the scenes that people aren't aware of, and, and maybe we need to tell them more like this mm -hmm. or, you know, mm -hmm. but sometimes we get so focused on what we're trying to accomplish that we, you know, I understand. Get one project done and then we move on to the next one. I gotcha. I gotcha. Well, I understand we're having another community input meeting. And by the way, I think those are so important. I agree. So this one is coming up on uh, May 14th, four o'clock at Reardon Hall. Uh, uh, I hope everybody can attend. If you can't attend, what we're going to do is we're going to televise this or, or uh, broadcast this via social media, go onto our Facebook page, and we're also going to record it. So if you wanted to view it two or three days later, you could do so. Yes. Uh, but it's all regarding whether it makes sense to close Brittany or not. Um, uh, unfortunately, our rounds have decreased over the last 10 years. Uh, and the golf committee wants to ask this question of the community. Now recognize we're really asking the entire community. We're asking the golf community, mm -hmm. but we're also asking 
other people, the, you know, the people that would be walking their dog, uh, that would be, you know, playing catch with their kid or something like that on a park setting. Mm -hmm. And so we're asking everybody to attend and, and provide our input. Uh, I, I think it's very important that we do that, uh, that we get, we seek the input from the community. Uh, we had a large number of residents attend the community input meeting regarding the Metfield connector. Yes. And, and that really, you know, it opened the eyes of the board and really gave them great information. Uh, ultimately, it is a board decision, but it, it gave them a lot of information to chew on. And, and there's a connection there, right? Is Brittany and that new trail, does it kind of all fit together or is it totally a separate well, place? Well, th it's two separate issues. Okay. I mean, the trail would go by Brittany, um, but they're two completely separate issues. If you, if you look at the amount of rounds played at Brittany, I mean, there's, um, last year there was 5,800 rounds played at Brittany. Um, if you look at the other golf courses, mm -hmm. their average is 24,000. Yeah. Uh, and so if you close Brittany, if you look just at the financials, there would be a net savings of $45,000. With that being said, we subsidize everything. You yes. know, we subsidize all the amenities, golf, lakes, you know, tennis, fitness, anything you do, that, that that's where your assessments go. But at what point do we, does the uh, subsidy get too much? Exactly. And that's the question that we need to ask ourselves. And it's just a question at this point. It's a just a question at this point, yes. Right, yeah. because, because I believe there's a rumor out there that you've already made up your mind. There is a rumor that a lot of that uh, you're seeing a lot on Facebook that the board has already made up their mind or the golf committee has made up their mind. And that's just not the not case. If I've spoken with the board members and 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 I've spoken for a few where they've changed their mind a couple times mm -hmm. based upon receiving input even before the meeting. Right. And so it's important to to understand that they want input. Um, they don't want to make the decision in isolation. And, and that's so important. Um, and, and I talk about, you know, the catch 22. Okay, so the, the, the no win scenario. And, and what that is, is, is people are saying, you know, well, what are you planning to do with the land? Okay, well, so that's a double edged sword. If we say we're going to do this, and here are the plans, then people say, well, you've developed plans, so clearly you've already made up your mind. Yes. Okay. And if we say um, we haven't developed any plans, then people say, well, how could you possibly be, you know, you're, or, you're unorganized. Yes. You know, you, you don't even know what, you're, what direction you're going. And so, okay, that's the catch-22. In this case, there are no plans other than we're thinking about doing you know, making a park. Mm -hmm. What's the definition of a park? Well, yes. we're going to talk about that on uh, on May 14th. Gotcha. So I encourage everybody to come, share their input. Uh, if you can't make it in person, view it on a uh, live stream. Mm -hmm. If you can't do that and you, you have to view it a couple days later, view the tape, provide input, you know, and help make the decision. You know, the board, this is a tough decision for the board. Yes. You know, it was a tough decision years ago to close Branchwood. And that was, that's turned out to be quite a success. Absolutely. Um, we had to expand the parking lot because of additional usage of that amenity. And so it's a tough decision. I'm proud of the board that they're willing to tackle a tough decision. It would have been really easy to just ignore this issue completely. Yeah, the rounds are going down. It's costing us money to maintain the golf course. It could have been very easy to stick your head in the sand. They're addressing a tough issue. And I'm proud of the board for that. So everybody, come to Reardon Hall on May 14th. What time? Four o'clock. Four o'clock. And whether you're a golfer, whether you're anything, come and help the board make a good decision. So until next month. Absolutely. Have a good time. Yes. And we'll see you all then. Thank you.